Pep Guardiola, Maurizio Pochettino, Diego Simeone. There is one common thread that joins these three top managers. Trophies are... oh, no, no. No, they have all been heavily influenced by one of the most innovative, eccentric, unpredictable and arguably unhinged managers in the history of football. A manager who installed a bed in his office, such as the amount of time he spends in it analysing video footage. A manager who once confronted protesting fans outside of his home with a hand grenade. A manager who famously said, if my players weren't human, I'd never lose. A manager by the name of Marcelo El Loco Bielsa. Born in Rosario, Argentina in July 1955, Marcelo Bielsa hails from a family of critical thinkers. His father was a lawyer, his brother Rafael served as Argentina's Minister of Foreign Relations, and his sister Maria worked as an architect before becoming a politician. It's likely that Marcelo would have had the intellect to pursue any of these professions, but it was football, his first love, that attracted 15-year-old Bielsa to leave home to pursue his dream as a live-in apprentice at Argentinian side Newell's Old Boys. Typically, as we will find, he was kicked out just two days later after refusing to leave his motorcycle outside, a sign of things to come. His playing career petered out fairly quickly with him lacking the pace required for top flight football, seeing him retire at just 25. It was at this point he took his first managerial role, coaching the University of Buenos Aires football team. He reportedly trialled 3,000 players before selecting his squad of 20, an early insight into his rigorous and intensely thorough approach to management. After a number of different managerial roles at clubs in Argentina and Spain, Bielsa was appointed in 1998 as the Argentinian national team manager. His Argentina side were runners-up in the 2004 Copa America, but later that year went on to win the gold at the Athens Olympics. Next for Bielsa was the Chile job, at that point a very different Chile to the successful Copa America winning side we know today, an evolution that Bielsa had a significant hand in. When he was appointed in 2007, Chile had failed to qualify for the previous two World Cups and had never won an international tournament. In 2011, Bielsa resigned from the Chile job as a reaction to the appointment of a senior Chilean FA official who he didn't really get on with, I guess, despite massive protests from Chilean fans to keep him in place. This action began his journey down a very rocky career path that would see him manage four clubs in just five seasons, never far from controversy. First came Athletic Bilbao. Bielsa saw some initial success at the Basque club, dispatching Alex Ferguson's Manchester United on the way to a 3-0 loss to Atletico Madrid in the 2011 Europa League final. Sadly, the 2012-2013 season saw Bilbao finish 12th and Bielsa failed to receive a new contract offer. 2014 saw the beginning of a tricky patch in Bielsa's career. He lasted just a year at French club Marseille, resigning early in his second season after conflicts with the club's management. Again, to the shock and surprise of pretty much everyone other than himself. Next came Lazio, where he quit after just two days, blaming the Italian club's inability to sign any of his seven transfer targets. From Italy, Bielsa returned to France to take on the Lille job. He began his tenure by getting rid of 11 of the team's more experienced players in a wholesale attempt to build a more youthful side. Again, a short-lived appointment. He lasted just 13 games. His contract terminated reportedly due to his decision to axe quite so many key players in one go. Didn't go down too well with the board. Now, there are a few consistencies across his roles that have defined Bielsa's career for better or for worse and contributed to his almost mythical folk hero status amongst football hipsters, players and managers alike. Firstly, as the sheer number of P45s he's collected attest to, he's a man of principle who won't let anything like a resignation or dismissal stand in the way of him managing and running a club in his own unique way. Secondly, his intense, full-throttle approach to both training and games has often seen his team start strongly but fade out later in the season. This clip is of a training session at Marseille, which as you can see is being run at an absolutely insane pace. We'll get to his tactics later, and there are plenty for us to get through, I assure you of that. But again, his inability or unwillingness to adapt his philosophy often takes its toll. In many ways, Bielsa is the Matt Letizier of management. Mercurial, gifted, but unwilling to bend in anyone's direction but his own. Like Letiz, his weaknesses are in many ways his strengths, but have also led to a career not exactly littered with trophies, despite his ability. So in June 2018, Bielsa took on his 12th managerial role at Championship Club Leeds United. A more intriguing combination of club and manager is hard to imagine. An underdog like Chile, with the fanatical fans of a Marseille, one of the true sleeping giants of English football, just waiting for their Prince Charming to awaken them. And awaken them Bielsa has, starting the season with a record four consecutive wins and some blistering attacking football. Alongside these successes, he's brought with him his trademark craziness. He reportedly asked for a calculation to be done to find out how hard the average Leeds fan would need to work to pay for a ticket to watch the team. He then instructed his players to pick up litter outside the ground for that period of time. Turns out it's about three hours. 
to help them appreciate the lengths fans go to to watch the club they love. We'll talk more about Leeds as a club as this series progresses, as in many ways they're as an interesting a club as Bielsa is a manager. I'm sure we won't be short on Bielsa anecdotes either. Upon joining Leeds United, Bielsa remarked in an interview that they were a better club than he deserved. Well, Marcelo, I don't agree. I think you and Leeds are a perfect match, and the perfect combination for Series 5 of Master League Story Mode, as we look to cement Bielsa's legacy and prove his brilliance as a manager at the highest level. Hello and welcome to Episode 1 of Series 5 of Master League Story Mode. So in a change to tradition, we're going to get into things much, much quicker than we normally do. There's going to be very little dilly-dallying today. If you want to get an update, really, on this whole channel, which option file I'm using, how to donate to the channel if you really want to, and all of those other things, then go and check out the first episode of my Become a Legend Story Mode series with Eggy Milana Vickery. It's definitely worth a watch if you've not already. There's a link just appearing now. Go and watch that, and there's a whole bigger intro to this channel and to everything that's going on. But what I will say is this is Master League Story Mode, and what it is, well, we play the mode of modes, the mode of the gods, Master League. Uh, but the slight variation is we play it with a real-life manager, and there he is, just to our right-hand side, Marcelo Bielsa. You've already been introduced. You know all about his life. If you made it through that whole introduction, then well done. I think we're going to get on well. If you got really bored and you didn't like the detail, then we probably probably won't see much of each other from now on. That's That's what this channel's about. We do go into a little bit more detail. We are a little bit more football geeky. We're not all about pack openings and uh, buying Mbappe at Arsenal. Oh, we did that last time, didn't we? Okay, so we do do that sometimes. But what I do is I pick a real manager, pick a team. We build the story of their career. We use the tactics and formations that they use. We only sign players that they have connections to. We go into a little bit of detail. We make it fun. I make it fun. I feel like I make it fun for myself. Before we go and choose the team and get everything going, the only thing which we haven't seen is the admin page. Uh, just to confirm, we'll be playing on Superstar. Uh, we are playing in Challenge Mode, which means we can be sacked. Challenge Mode is the only way to play Master League as far as I'm concerned. It's revolutionised the game. I love the jeopardy of knowing that our job might be at risk at any time. It's always exciting. Come on then, Marcelo, let's do it. So here we are. We're in Leeds. Marcelo's got down Leeds. And he's joining a club that I thank cannot be... Oh no, I've lost it. I've lost the Yorkshire accent. It was there for a second, wasn't it? But anyway, I was going to say, there is, there's, I just can't think of a better combination of manager and club than Leeds United and Marcelo Bielsa. He is a manager who has been at the top of his game, has won things, but now has had a series of difficult jobs, is on a bit of a downward trajectory, needs to get his career back on track. And Leeds United are very similar. They've had a million managers in about three months. And they really need a bit of stability and they need to find a way back into the Premier League. That's where they deserve to be. They're a massive club. They've won the league. They've won the FA Cup. They've been to a U European Cup final. We've not seen anywhere near enough of them in recent years. And hopefully with a bit of Bielsa magic and madness behind them, we can find our way back to the top flight. So quick look at the schedule for August. And we are in the ICC. That's interesting. I think it looks for just about any team, even Waslam Beveren. In our other series, get to play in the ICC. I'm sure we'll be playing against some ridiculous sides there. It'll be a good chance for us, hopefully, to build up a bit of team spirit before we get into the season proper. Who are we playing? Oh, Celtic, River Plate and Valencia. That's that's doable. I reckon we can uh, we can do all right there. And there is Bielsa having an interview. Uh, that's not realistic, obviously, because uh, for those of you who know anything about Marcelo Bielsa will know he doesn't do interviews. He's very enigmatic in that way. He's quite mysterious. His press conferences can be very, very long, the ones that he has to do. But then often he spends a lot of the time just looking at the floor. He's an interesting guy. He's not the sort of manager who wants the attention, who wants the fame. He is very much a managerial purist. He just wants to be out on the training ground, drilling his players into the ground, getting them to play with his tactics, and ultimately winning games his way. That's what we want to do. That's what he wants to do. He doesn't want to be on the pages of the newspaper every day. He just wants to manage. And I think that is admirable. I really do. Right, before we go and look at his tactics, which is going to be interesting to implement, I'm not sure how this is going to go. Um, I'm going to try and explain to you one of Bielsa's most famous formations, and we're going to see if it works in pairs. I, I don't know yet. Uh, there are a couple of things that I wanted to uh, take a look at, which I read about, which could be uh, quite interesting additions. So, as far as I'm aware, in the training settings now, you have these presets like Destroyer and Build Up that you can choose from, but in Focus Training now, yes, you can. You can assign points to different areas which would be great so if you've got a young player who's quick who's good at shooting and passing but physically weak maybe his stamina is low then you can 
whack five in there lovely and that gives you yeah full training on physical contact jump stamina and injury resistance that's nice i like that that's a nice touch little new thing there so in the team role list there's a slight change as well uh, these are all the team roles that we want to get we had a lot of success uh with smart players last season giving us a massive team spirit boost we're going to want to uh, get some of them in if we can and what you can use now is this outline of a smart player which i guess if you're looking for players who maybe don't already have smart player but might be in line for that role you can uh, tick off some of these personality traits like team player and composure, technique and insight. And then I guess you can uh, try and aim to get some of these players in. They're three star team roles. There are some of the lower ones like leader, star player could be useful as well. Big Patrick Bamford. Oh, he's a star player. Well, let's hope he is. We'll get onto him later. Bit of a Master League story mode running joke is Paddy B. And the final one in the manager office, and you can't get to it yet, I'm guessing because the chairman hasn't set us any missions yet, but the missions looks like that will replace what was basically the manager trust level sort of info screen on the last Master League. And uh, I'm thinking there might be multiple missions in a season, which will be interesting to see how much that affects your chairman trust. Chairman trust obviously being vital to keeping your job. So there we are, a few little extra bits there, which could be interesting as we go, especially the training. I'm looking forward to using that. Right, so the big thing with choosing Marcelo Bielsa was always going to be trying to implement some of his trademark tactics. And the one I'm going to go for, I don't think he's quite using it to this extent at Leeds in real life, but I want to go for his 3-3-1-3 that he used to particularly good effect when he was managing the Chilean national side. It's an interesting formation and I really have no clue how it's going to work in pairs, especially this year. But I'm going to try and build it now. So essentially, we start with three centre-backs. Um, I'm not going to have them too narrow. Uh, the middle of the three centre-backs will be playing as a sweeper. I think we can add that in as an advanced instruction. Um, so we'll have Ailing, Berardi and Janssen back there for now. We can always change this. Team Spirit's already very low at 53. It's going to be interesting to see how that is affected. And then essentially that's the back three. And then the next three, as I said, it's a 3-3-1 are two central midfielders and a defensive midfielder. He's known in South America as a regista. He's sort of the conductor who will ideally be connecting that three with the one and then the front three as well. And the front three exists as two wide wingers. Now the phrase you're going to hear a lot from me, and I don't know much about it because I'm a bit of a noob when it comes to uh, football tactics in general, but it's overloads. The whole idea of Marcelo Bielsa's way of playing is to create overloads all over the pitch. So in defence, with what will essentially be a back five when these two drop back into right and left back positions, you're creating an overload on the strikers. But then also, when we're attacking in the midfield, the theory is that these inverted wing backs, we've got Klitsch and Douglas now, they come into the midfield and they create an overload in the midfield, drawing out opposition players. That then creates space for the wingers. And uh, what you might... what. I think might be the uh, aim is that you have maybe Douglas, Phillips and size passing around there. Alawiski will get involved. You're pulling everyone over to our left-hand flank. And then you're leaving space for big Pablo over there to uh, yeah to receive the ball with a long crossfield pass. And then we feed the striker, the striker in this formation, very much just a finisher, a fox in the box. Um, but yeah, that's this is roughly, I would say, the sort of positioning that we're in when we're in possession. Now, I think we're going to have to use a fluid formation because I don't think these two would be getting back anywhere near enough. So we're at 53 team spirit now. If we switch to fluid, okay, that keeps it at 53. That's okay. So then if we go and out of position, drag Douglas back to left back. He is a left back, so that improves that. And then Klitsch back to right back. That's fine. And then I guess the wingers move back as well. There we are. So 54 team spirit. It was pretty low anyway. But that can work. That could work. So that's fine. So at kickoff, yeah, we'll play it like that. We're trying to get... Basically, we want to we want to get all of the action happening in the middle between these four here. And they can find the quick routes through to either the attacking midfielder or the striker or the wingers. And that is the theory anyway. In defence, I wonder how this is going to go. Whether these wing backs will be able to get back in time. Whether it's going to leave gaps down the wings. That is a pretty bad thing to leave in pairs because I'm pretty sure that will be exploited by the um, by the AI if we leave those spaces but we're going to give it a go we might have to tweak this as we go anyone with a better knowledge of Bielsa's strategies then please let me know what I'm doing wrong but I think that that's uh, that's looking okay it's interesting it's different we've never played three at the back in Master League story mode 
So this is certainly new. So that's the formation. This is the Bielsa Classic 3313. I'm excited. It's a new one on me. So we've got his formation. Now we need to look at his tactics and his way of playing. This is going to be brutal. As far as I'm aware, this is why none of his teams ever do well past Christmas. But we'll see. We'll see. I'm, ex I'm still excited. Can you hear the excitement in my voice? You should do. So his attacking style is sort of possession, but it's more of a counter-attacking style. But it's not a long ball, Kareem Diakra long pass to the target man. This is a short passing, quick build-up counter-attacking side. And um, as I said, although we do have very wide wingers, most of the initial attacking should happen down the centre, utilising those overloads, utilising those two inverted wing-backs. If you've watched Man City this season, or you watch Guardiola at uh, Bayern Munich as well, you know how much emphasis he's put on buying really expensive left and right wing-backs in Mendy and Walker, whoever he plays there, because he needs players who can play ball, who can drop in. And Mendy this season has done it a lot for Man City. He'll drop into essentially a central midfield possession. He sees a lot of the ball. And it's very effective because opposition defenders don't know who to track. They get lost. They're like, hang on, that's that's meant. What's he doing there? Where do we go? And that's what we want to try and do today. So that's why centra the center of the pitch is so important. Um, we do want flexible positioning as well. That's a big part of his strategy. And support range will keep in the middle for now. I'm not quite sure how that plays into it. Now, defensively, it's frontline pressure. In many ways, he's the originator of the Gagan Press before I had a trendy name. He's all about quick closing down, high up the pitch, winning the ball back, and then breaking with purpose. Every pass has to have a purpose. That's what Bielsa always says. Got to look forward, tr look to try and be explosive, and try and be direct. But to do that, we need to win the ball back, high up the pitch, and then break. So again, containment error down the middle. Can have a lot of men in the middle there, the defensive midfielder and the, uh, and the three centre-backs. Aggressive pressuring and a very high defensive line. This couldn't be any more different to our Kareem Diakra tactics at Claremont and Arsenal last season. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have to adapt. I feel like this is going to be a real shock to the system when we get going. Okay, so having made those changes, it's dropped our team spirit significantly. We're down to 47 now. I've had to change it from uh, from frontline pressure to all-out defence. That drops us down 7, and 40 team spirit is just going to be too low. It's going to put us in a massive deficit straight off the mark, and that's going to make things really tricky. Um, so I think all-out defence, as long as we then have Gagan press on as well, I think will pretty much represent... Bielsa's defensive tactics. It's not ideal, but we, we're going to have to make do. Maybe as we go, we can change it, but changing this team that much and going down to 40 team spirit is just unheard of. That's not going to work. So Gagan Press is the only defensive tactic we're going to use. We're going to have to use one of our attacking things to basically have one of the centre-backs as a sweeper. That's pretty key to this system. So now I've just spotted false fullbacks, which is an option using advanced instructions to have that inverted wing-back. That's interesting. I guess we'd have to have just a normal formation rather than a fluid formation with five at the back and then hope that false fullbacks would work properly. I'm going to leave that for now because I want to use hug the touchline to ensure that our wingers stay very wide because that's all part of the plan. As I said, this needs tweaking as we go. 47 team spirit is absolutely terrifying. That is not how he wanted to start this, but needs must, you know, Bielsa had the whole summer at Leeds to work this formation into play and, and get everyone used to his way of playing. Uh, we don't. We've got like a day maybe until the ICC starts. So yeah, we're going to have to... Uh, needs must. Needs must at the moment. So this is how we're lining up. Now we need to try and assign our best players into these positions. Uh, Roof is clearly not going to be our centre forward. He's 66 rated. Uh, size can play there. He's 71 rated. He's pretty decent. But I think Patrick Bamford's going to be our man. Cheeky chappy Paddy B. Uh, he played for us in one of the series of Master League Story Mode. I can't remember which one. I think it might have been might have been a Bristol City. He's a good goal scorer. We don't need a target man in this formation. We definitely just need a finisher. That is the main thing. In theory, these three players here are going to be doing all the hard work and then we'd just be getting balls and cutbacks in the box and he'd be putting them away. So that's our centre forward, but by the looks of it, we're very much lacking in cover here. It looks like Says can play up there as well. Um, that's pretty much it. Don't have any other over 70 rated centre forward. So that has got to be top of our shopping list, really. A good old fashioned goal scorer. Fox in the box. That's what we need there. Looks like Paddy B's taken us up from 47 to 48. So that's good. If we can sneak up to 50, I'll be happier once we've got everyone in place. Uh, Alawiski. Uh, he looks like more of a, he's more of a right winger by the looks of it. 68 rated on the right. Um... When it comes to wingers, well, there's one spot in this team that is an absolute nailed-on guarantee. And it is Big Jack Harrison. We haven't even mentioned him yet. 
but an absolute legend on this channel. There's no way that we can't have him starting. Um, that's taken us down a bit, actually. That's a shame. Oh, no, 47. That's fine. So we stick at 47. Aloiski comes off. I think we'll play Pablo out on the left or maybe Saez out on the left. No, it looks like it's going to be Pablo Hernandez, who's been Leeds' best player in real life this season. He'll play out on the left. And, uh, yeah, big Jackie H. He's in on the right. Now, he hasn't got the right face there, but I have been an editor to him. He does look like him in game, so that's good. Um, yep, Jack Harrison. I mean, Alawiski is good, but I think that's probably... I think he's probably the best player for that position anyway. 72 ratings, pretty high. I'm, I'm glad that he's been that highly rated. I'm a little surprised. Maybe it was the Become a Legend Story Mode series that's encouraged the editors to uh, give him that extra boost. So as we said, Pablo Hernandez is on the, on the left-hand side. That means we'll have right and left-footed wingers on the, on the opposite wing to their sort of traditional, but that's okay. I mean, Pablo Hernandez makes almost more sense as an attacking midfielder, but I don't think we've got any other options on the left wing. And Samu says, Samu says, stand up. Oh, no, that's Simon says, isn't it? Samu says, uh, looks pretty decent. He's right-footed, good on the ball, strong, good balance. Good balance. Uh, good all-rounder. I think he'll be good in that role. Uh, defensive midfielder. We've got uh, Klitsch who can play there. Lewis Baker. He's a good player as well. Um, doesn't look like we've got really any, except for Shaughnessy, any sort of actual proper defensive midfielder. So that might be one that we need to look at as well alongside a striker. I think for now, we'll start... I mean, Phillips is pretty good there, actually, because he's defensively minded. Um, he's not traditionally a defensive midfielder, but I think he'd be pretty decent there. Uh, that means I think we'll bring in Lewis Baker for Douglas. The only problem is there is that Lewis Baker is not a left back, whereas Douglas is. That gives us an extra team, one team spirit. Douglas is actually one of our better players as well, so that's a tough choice. Douglas obviously is the most natural left back in the side, 60, 76 rated. He's actually our highest rated player and he's got great passing, great from place kicks as well. He's quick, good ball winner. I think he is the right player to play there. So hopefully once he's played there a few times, he'll get used to it. Obviously Lewis Baker would be the sensible option if he were only going for a central midfielder, but he lacks any defensive ability. He's a good passer. I think the question is whether it's going to be him or Klitsch on this side, for now anyway, I mean, Klitsch is the better passer. Uh, he's a little bit less, I don't know. I mean, either of those two could play there. We'll start Baker there. Um, but what I think we do need to buy, really, is that Benjamin Mendy, is that Philip Lahm, who, who can start as a central midfielder, is highly rated there, but then also is comfortable as a right back. I'm happy for Douglas now to be someone we try and train to do that. But I think we'll definitely look for a right back in the window who can play as a right back and a central midfielder. That's going to be key. Um, at the back, uh, Janssen is our highest rated centre back. He looks decent as our sweeper. Ailing the captain, that's fine, we'll keep him in there. And Berardi can come out and we'll put in Cooper as the third of the three centre backs. And I think that might be our starting 11 for now. Klitsch might feel... A bit aggrieved to have missed out. He's our highest rated player on the bench. And then we've got a lot of very poor players not on the bench at all. Um, we're going to have to uh, definitely transfer this to a few of them. But this is how we'll line up to start. How this formation works in and out of possession remains to be seen. But it's going to be fun, whatever happens. But I think looking at our shopping list now, definitely a centre forward or a keeper as well. Our highest is 68 rated. Um, maybe one of these specialist inside wing backs, um, the Benjamin Mendy role. Uh, we wouldn't mind another winger by the looks of it. We've only really got these two. Says can play out there a bit. We've got Elowiski, Alioski, who can play there as well. And uh, yeah, that's it. So I think uh, if we can, I think we've got to have a set another centre forward. We can't be relying on Patrick Bamford to provide the goals. And a defensive midfielder would be nice as well. So if we can sign a centre forward, goalkeeper, left or right back, you can play at centre mid and a defensive midfield. I think we will have done pretty well. Uh, we've got a lot of players to sell. Will we be able to get that done in the window? I don't know. But that is the tactics. That is Bielsa condensed. That is a crash course in his famous 3-3-1-3. How it will play out. 
I've not got a clue. It's certainly going to be interesting. So next stop is the negotiations. Let's get that moving. We're already well into the transfer window. Got separate transfer and uh, salary budgets, as we know. But before we get into looking at this and maybe transfer listing a few of our players, I'm just going to quickly take you through the transfer rules. Yes, this is a big part of Master League Story Mode. Pay attention, because if you want to help me in terms of uh, finding players and those sort of things, then you'll need to listen here. So first of all, as you can see, we operate under something called the Six Degrees of Sherwood Rule. This basically means that we can only sign players from teams or players themselves who've got a relationship or some sort of link with our chosen manager. Obviously, our manager this season is Marcelo Bielsa. He's got an absolute wealth of different clubs and sides that we can deal with. In the past, we've had it. I mean, the last one, Karine Diacra, she hadn't really played for any side, so it was a bit more difficult. But we've got plenty of teams to look at here. So uh, just a quick look at Marcelo Bielsa's back catalogue. Obviously, he played for Newell's Old Boys, he managed there as well. He also managed at Atlas and America and Bella Sarsfield. I think they're all in the Argentinian league. Then at Espanyol, he managed Argentina, which means we can, we can sign any Argentinian player. And also Chile, so we can sign any Chilean. That's a huge bank of players for us to look at. Very exciting. And then also we've got Athletic Bilbao, Marseille, Lazio and Lille. So plenty of players to look at which is going to be great so if you want to uh, find me some players to buy then those are the teams initially that we can look at the rule is sometimes relaxed a bit if things are a bit more difficult um, but I think we're going to do that on a case-by-case -case basis this year so I mean for example the Tim Sherwood series uh, he played with Gareth Southgate for England uh, so we allowed at the time Gareth Southgate was the under 21 manager we allowed Sherwood to sign any England under 21 so that's sort of how it works uh, the Ferguson principle I've just mentioned because um, Bielsa managed a national squad, it means he can sign anyone from that nation. The overall limit is sometimes controversial in this series, but it's one I'm definitely sticking to. It means that we can only sign players who are equal to or less than our highest overall rated player, which is 76 as it stands. We're also allowed one loan and one free transfer per season as a maximum. We can only send the scout within our league country in the first season. So we're in the championship, we have to send them to England. And then next season we'll be able to add a new country. New for, and a new rule for this series, uh, after the Arsenal uh, not having any English players fiasco, is that we are going to be following the homegrown rule and we must have eight homegrown players in the squad at any one time. So there we have it. So I think next step is to go into our team. And uh, yeah, so as we saw, our two highest rated players, 76. I'll say is also 76. Um, so that's the highest play rating player that we can deal with. Um, we're just going to go through quickly and transfer list all of our shit players. So skip forward a bit there. Basically anyone below Pierce we have transfer listed. I think we're going to transfer list at least one of our keepers. And then we're getting into the players who could potentially play. I don't think Roof is going to be uh, good enough for us. He's 25 years old. I can't see him getting much better. He's quick. That's about it. Uh, Dallas. Um, he's adaptable. The Northern Irishman. But I think if we had a uh, good offer for him, we'd certainly let him go. Uh, for sure. I'm not for sure that he'll ever get a real chance to play. So we'll put him on the list as well. Uh, I quite like transfer listing anyone over the age of 30. I mean, Pablo Hernandez. He is a great player in real life. And he's actually still fairly quick. How much is he worth? 5.8 million. We might trade him if we have the chance. But I think we'll keep him off the list for now. And that, I'm afraid, is all we've got time for in this episode, but I will do you a deal. If we can get this video to 500 likes today, I will release episode 2 this evening. Yes, this very evening, Sunday evening. If not, then you have to wait till Tuesday, which is the regular release date, where we will be getting into the very first game of the Marcelo Bielsa era, alongside uh, getting a few transfers done, getting a few players lined up got some plans. I think you'll be interested to see who it is. So I hope you've enjoyed learning about Marcelo Bielsa. If you've made it all the way to the end of this and you're annoyed that you're not going to see any football, then I completely agree. This went on longer than I hoped, but at least now we've got the proper context for this series, which I think is going to be a great one. So I'll see you on Tuesday and then see you on Friday. Those are the two Master League Story Mode release days. And it's become a Legend Story Mode on Monday and Thursday. So join me for them. I'll see you in a bit.